Hey everyone, Rajat here, back again with yet another video. So if you remember, I have introduced you guys to a series where I'm showing you my journey of building a SaaS product on my own and documenting the entire process of building a product and then going to the customers and showing you the entire cycle. So in today's video, I want to talk about styling the project because styling is pretty essential part because if the project does not look good and it has not got certain type of UI UX, it is not going to fly among the customers. They can be the business users or the users of the users of your product, which means that if a business purchases your product, then the customer of that business should also like the product because otherwise the customers of that business would not be using that product due to some bad design or due to some lacking UI UX. So let's quickly talk about what decisions I took and what were my thought processes behind making all of those decisions. So first of all, I wanted to just give the bestest possible UI to the end user of my product. So I had to take care of something like the website or the product should be responsive and it should cater to various screen sizes. Then it should also have a decent color scheme. On top of that, it should also have a great UI UX up to a point where everything feels so fluid and natural and the users should not struggle with finding where the proper controls are and how to carry certain things out on the UI. So I wanted all of those check boxes to tick and I was considering many options like should I build my own framework sort of framework in order to write the CSS or the styling part or should I use something off the shelf or you should I use some sort of grid framework in order to make my website responsive and all and like I experimented with quite a lot of frameworks that were out there and I settled down on material UI which is a framework for react applications where you can give your project some sort of a material look and if you are not aware of what material design is it is a design principles laid out by google and it has been quite popular since it was introduced right so i decided to use that material ui product the, there were a couple of reasons to do that first of all it look very neat and the ground rules for structuring or designing your components were laid out pretty clearly because it has got an entire website regarding how to create your own product or how to design your own component as per the material UI guidelines. So it was a no brainer if you want to design something and you want that component to stick to the material design guidelines you can head over this website and then just read all the guidelines and you can then make sure that your component and your design is up to the mark and in accordance to this particular material ui design okay and then this particular material ui framework has also got some bells and whistles which are pretty essential for any css or styling framework to name a few, the grid system was there, the component system was there and many of the components were already built for you. So it is actually a no brainer for anyone to use those components that come pre-built into this particular framework. So if I wanted to create a drawer, there is a component for that. If I wanted to create some sort of toolbox there is a component for that if i wanted to create some sort of model dialog there is a component for that so that is something which drew me towards this particular material ui framework now if you can have a look at my screen i can head over to materialui.com and this is a framework which i have used for my product but there are a lot of options that are available to guys like me who are 
just not trying to build their own CSS or styling framework just for the sake of it. So it's always better to use something which uh, has been through a lot of uh, battle testing and things like that. And there are a lot of people who are working on this product. So as to be sure that this product is something which is constantly getting new updates and bug fixes, right? So that is also a strong reason for me to pick this thing up for styling my component. Now, if I can show you the UI, as of now, this is what I have built for my blog or whatever you want to call it for my CMS. So I know that this looks pretty, you can say bleak or pretty basic, but it is what it is as of now. I just want the framework to be as configurable as possible. I want the customer to be in a position where he can just install this thing and then he can just configure it the way he or she wants to. Okay, and this is the landing page, which is, uh, you know, kind of very basic as of now. So as you can see, there are a couple of material things on this UI, not many. I think there is only this one button, which is having a material look. But if you head over to the dashboard, which is the centerpiece of this particular CMS system or learning management system, you can see that there are many components of material design in this particular UI. So I have used these tech boxes from material UI framework. Then this drawer is there. If I, you know, somehow make the browser smaller, uh, then you can see that the drawer, you know, somehow hides. So I wanted all of those things and these things, uh, you know, come pretty naturally to any user because the foundations has already been laid out by some other well-known parties. So it is pretty clear for the end user to use a product which is using similar sort of design guidelines. So since this is material design and it is very common out there in the wild due to Android and due to material design on the web, I think that now this website looks pretty easy to work with. I think everything is pretty clear. If you want to do or carry out a certain function, it is pretty clear from the UI where you can spot that function and how to carry any certain process out. So these were some of the design decisions which I took and there are many yet to come and many yet to be made. But yeah, I wanted to give you guys a quick update about what I am working on these days and how far down the journey I am uh, into building this SaaS product. So stay tuned for yet another episode where I will be talking about uh, maybe some other aspect of building this product. Also, one more thing, if you like this sort of content, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and also give this video a thumbs up because hey, when you give me a thumbs up, it really motivates me to produce more such stuff. And if you want to see some more developer insights, make sure you chime in with your opinions in the comment section. I see you guys over in the next video.